not certain where I am exactly, but I know I'm in southern Siberia. I was continuing my travel series on the rural lifestyles of warlord Russia, but the last town I visited, the locals spoke of strange, uh, strange occurrences in, in the woods nearby. My interest peaked. I went to investigate. I'm currently skulking in low shrubbery. There's movement up ahead, but I can't make out what's causing it. There's something here, with me in this forest. I hear it. I smell it. I feel it. It is exuberance itself. I feel a camaraderie and a fellowship, the likes of which I've never experienced. I can almost see them now. Two legs, four legs, together, moving through the trees. Almost dancing in the moonlight. Wait, it's not moonlight. It's so beautiful. They draw it here. I feel whole now. It's true what they've always said. Friendship is the real magic. This is Dr. Carol Stetland, head surgeon at the Gray Hills facility. The time is. 12.43 a.m. Central Standard Time, January 8, 1963. That, that's correct. Yes. Sorry. Right. But I think we are present and have sound body and mind. As I understand it, we are about to begin the operation on a unique mole specimen. Our procurement team refused to answer any questions, so we'll be going into this effectively blind. As a result, please understand that given the bizarre nature of this specimen, our findings will likely to be expressed in relation to known scientists. This is new ground, so do bear with us. Wonderful. With introductions out of the way, let's get started. Dr. Erickson, would you kindly? The skin seems somewhat on par with most folds in terms of thickness. The skin itself seems much smoother. I can't make out any hair beyond the mane. Veins seem pumped. Well, no. Hold on. These are strange for a horse. Hold on. The aortic valve. It's a little odd. This, uh... Yeah, no, I see what you mean. Uh, for audio listeners, I'm looking at the aortic valve, which joins the left ventricle and the aorta, just as in humans. Equine mammals do have a similar valve in function, but this one looks remarkably stenciled. Could you... Are you on it? This... Okay. No, that's... Oh, holy fuck. That is that's fun. a... A human. What in the ever-living fuck is this? Uh, for the record, this is doctors... Dr. Stenciland. Everyone, calm down. Oh, for Christ's sake. Okay, no. Those are human ribs. Jesus. Fuck. Okay. No. Those are definitely human. That's a fucking inscription. Oh. What the oh. fuck? Okay, okay. That's a human liver, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay. Otto. What? Jesus. Nothing. Nothing. I don't have a better way to put this, Carol. This is a truly fucked situation. Past the scalpel. Proceeding with the operation, I'm opening the front right leg, uh, just above the hoof. Oh, shit. Otto? Had the tibia. Yeah. Alright, I think it's time I take my two weeks and think this over. Otto, you free to come with? Alright. Stensland? No. All right, well, I'm shutting this thing off. I think someone else can... All right, is, uh, is this thing on? Good, okay, okay. My name is uh, Captain Andrew Ferros. The date is March the 3rd, 19... You're not supposed to give the date. Apparently, I'm not supposed to give the date. What? I, that's dumb. Who's even going to listen to these? Okay, uh, fine, whatever. It's it's definitely not March the 3rd. I, I don't really care. This is day one of what people are apparently calling the 
Ferris Project, whatever that means. I don't get paid to figure out what's going on. That's what the eggheads are for. I've just been let on as the head of security for the Grey Hills facility, and I have been instructed to keep an audio log for some reason. No clue why. To be honest, I'm not even sure what we're doing here. I saw some eggheads carting around some kind of, uh, Russian horse. It's a pony, sir. A, a pony? Yes, sir. The Russians, they're, uh, turning into ponies. They're doing what? Security log for the Ferris Project, day 97, I think. This is Captain Ferris reporting. A few moments ago, a containment alert was sounded on sub-level 17. Apparently, something's gotten loose down there. Grey Hills Bay security has been mobilized in response, and a task force is being formed to... What the hell? Over there. 
It appears to be glowy. I knew that in Yakusha there were gemstones and other stuff, but not here. And I have never seen something like that. Let me pick it up. What? Don't touch it. It's glowing, which is the universal signal for this object is evil. It could even be radioactive. Screw you, Agustin. I have bills to pay, and clearly this is a waste of time. At least I'll get something from selling this. Dude, don't put the camera on the ground. It's frozen. Do you know how much it costs? Fine, fine, fine. You wait. Let me just pick it up. I swear to God, dude. If anything happens to you because of touching that, and you get cancer, and hairs fall off, it's not my fault.
I could have, I could have let it live. I, I could have, if this thing was intelligent, we could have asked it something, anything. We could have asked it where it came from, how it came to be, if, if it even knew. The thing clearly had control over its basic and even full motor function. Stuff horses don't usually or are supposed to have, obviously. What could I have done even then? It would, it, it would, it would have just told me things that we already knew from asking our procurement teams, except security had us cut off. No, no, they would have stopped me. Security or administration or someone. This thing had to have come from somewhere. I didn't know it, it, its accent. It was foreign. It wasn't German. Definitely not Japanese. It was a girl's. Definitely. It was definitely Russian. I, I, I hadn't heard it before, but even then, it was bizarre. The, the pitch, it, the pitch was fucked up. I, I, I wouldn't even know how to describe it. it. It could have been human if it weren't a horse. If that makes sense, and I fucking killed it. We gasped at cyanide and the poor fucking thing looked at me while it whimpered. A fucking murderer gun. This thing, all of this flies in the face of everything I've taught, was taught. This is bullshit, that's what this is. This is fucking insane. A fucking murderer. I don't even know what I killed. I, I just hope this thing. No, no. I cannot think of that. Christ. I'm supposed to write a fucking report on this. To Nixon. What, what, what am I supposed to say? Hello, Mr. President. Horses talk now. Thank you for the $400 million budget. This is fucking insanity. I, I've got to be insane. I'm not sure. I've lost my marbles. I'm not playing with a full fucking thing. But I know what I saw. I'm not going to... No. I'm going to walk out of my therapist's office with a prescription to something or I'm going to weep at the death of sanity on God's greenest earth. I've been put here for one thing and one thing only. That is to make sense out of whatever comes out of the back pocket of God. This, this though, I can't be sure God's behind this one. This is Dr. Richard Hark, lead particle physicist within the Great Hills facility. Today is Thursday, February 13th. The day before Valentine's Day. I'm recording this message because uh, we uh Christ. We uh received another specimen. Like the previous specimen, the creature was a quadruped standing about four feet tall and weighing two hundred and fifty pounds. Though other scientists, myself included, have taken to describing these creatures as fools, it is obvious that this term is inaccurate or at the very least misleading. Creatures bear only a passing resemblance to known species of horses. I was composed roughly two-thirds to space of the head. The legs, if you can even call them that, are featureless stocks, devoid of musculature or hooves. In absence of fur, the, the, the flesh is a single smooth surface. It is most frequently a bright pastel red. And as indicated on other recordings, they talk in Russian, confirmed by outside experts, though that seemed self-evident from the outset. Translator was acquired from, I don't know where, the agency, I assume. Uh, questioning follow normal procedure, who are you, what is your name, what do, what do you want, etc. The creature, uh, creature verbally indicated its name was Ilya, age 22. He claimed to be a citizen of the, uh, uh, horse grad, which I assume is a mistranslation of some capacity, arrived in the former Soviet Union by means of some kind of portal. Like a Looney Tunes cartoon, I'd imagine. Where things went wrong is when we asked why he was here, what his objective was. Uh, the creature uh, indicated he wanted to get away from his home. Uh, he said that it was not safe. After we asked why it wasn't safe, the creature clarified that it was because uh, she was on the other side, that some godlike creatures had gone away and she had taken over in the absence. Attempts to further clarify uh, resulted in God started crying. I don't know how to, I wouldn't know how to explain it, uh, except to say that it began to sob big, thick 
TAs. He kept repeating that she had taken over. He kept repeating that she would try to find a way inside. The interview was a prematurely terminated as the specimen, myself, and several other staff had become emotionally compromised. We'll reconvene at a later date. Richard Hark, February 20th. After a week, we resumed attempts to communicate with the creatures, plural now. We appear to have obtained a new specimen from the Russian Far East. Specimen, according to highly redacted reports, was found near what we are calling a uh, portal, in absence of a clearer term. The report also indicates the retrieval of a crystal of unknown origin, which I am to assume is being examined by a separate team. But I digress. Our objective today was to obtain more information from the specimens on their home and the source of their fear and slash or anxiety. They call her the Regent. She's an equine of incredible power, formerly a servant of two god queens known as Luna and Celestia. After the disappearance of both queens from some unknown cataclysm, the Regent seized power and it changed her. Warped her. She has been trying to find them at any cost. She's ripped apart the specimen's world in search of them. I, I am aware of the absurdity of this story, but the fear in which the specimens related appeared real. They once again cried through their enormous size and became extremely agitated when the translator indicated that we had come in possession of the crystal. They kept repeating, quote, she'll find a way inside, unquote. It's all they keep repeating. I'm not sure how worried I should be about that. Beginning our first block of debate, it seems the United States government has gone ahead and granted us authorization on exact degrees of publicity on Project Veris and how to address the public given these circumstances. Now, does anyone want to begin? Yes. Of course. Fuck me. So, in that case, let's start with those in favor. That's you, Owens. What's your argument? We need the resources. Right now, we're spreading thin on trying to keep this thing a secret. Meanwhile, the public sectors that are kept in the dark remain pretty much useless in our efforts. Our efforts are to secure the world from these issues, contain them within Russia, and to protect people from turning into these things. Safety is, and always has been, our priority, not secrecy. Dr. Hark? I admit that we need the resources, but we also need the secrecy. Could you imagine what would happen if the public ever found out? Imagine it for even a second. There's going to be hordes of tourists going to Russia, whether we want them to or not, and the ponies would invite them in with open arms. We need to have outbreaks left and right, a black market the likes of which we've never even thought of to the We public. already have that! We've already gotten reports from the CDC about sporadic outbreaks. We already have three busts of crystal rings. Three! It's only getting worse whether we want it to or not, and we need standard security and law enforcement, otherwise we won't be able to handle this! <laughs> know how many religions are about to be invalidated by fucking ponies? Ah, please, the church will adjust. They'll just- Fuck you. Alright, I think we have our verdict. We'll get in contact with the State Department, see what we can cook up for a reveal. Hopefully, we just get it done before the Japanese or Germans do it first. Piece of shit. for some of you motherfuckers who were down in storage fucking around with samples of Russian brothels you just get to ponies. Okay, so I shouldn't have to fucking explain this, but playing with hunting brothels and outside of fucking X-Crystal should not be happening. Do you fuckers understand the weight of what we're dealing with here? I have spoken with enough people on the side to have authorization to turn you into ponies for an experiment. I swear to Christ, I will have you sent to Greymane as expendable manpower if you don't straighten out. Fuck! Jesus, if we catch anyone fucking around with brothels like this again, I have full authority to send you to this basement's closest room to hell. And that's a promise. Security log, day such and such of the Ferris Project. I don't care. 
the boys managed to corner some Kempe Thai agent sneaking around the place and detained him. This is formally an interview, but informally, I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, buddy, I, uh, I don't speak Japanese. I'm going to need you to stop talking. So, 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 Tell me about it. Norman of the Ferris Project. This is Dr. Norman Grayman reporting. I've recently been transferred from the CDC. Apparently the feds needed a livestock specialist. I suppose I'm flattered. I'm honored that the government was interested in my work. Agricultural epidemiology is an underappreciated line of work. But maximum security clearance for a humble scientist like myself I mean, I, I guess it has to be serious. Now to see what's in this envelope. Agents in Russia returned samples of four new pathogens that rapidly spread through horses, deer, yaks, and a variety of other ungulates. There is growing concern that if horse-to-human transmission of these viruses is possible, a global pandemic of unprecedented scale will shock the world. Good God. Pathogen Alpha. Ungulates have been observed developing severe rashes, fatigue, anemia, indigestion, vomiting, and weight loss. Afflicted animals are identifiable by their gaunt appear. Lord, that's horrid. <coughs> Never seen such a horse so withered. Agents have informally named the pathogen Coltiac disease. Pathogen beta. Originally mistaken for cases of pathogen alpha, ungulates with the pathogen suffer from fevers, dehydration, constant diarrhea, which may contain blood, mucus, and pus, fatigue, and weight loss. Agents have informally named this pathogen horsentary. Are they playing me for a fool? Okay, what? Oh, whatever. Pathogen gamma. Ungulates have been observed with a wide variety of severe symptoms, including multiple swollen lymph nodes, vomiting, bleeding, lameness, and hints of necrosis. Experts in Russia have theorized it's a far more lethal variant of equine cancer. Pathogen Gamma has multiple informal names, but the preferred label is... Prancer! Hey, you there! Yeah! I'm talking to you! Is this some sort of sick joke? I'm sorry, sir. I'm afraid we're not familiar. I'm Dr. Carol Stetsland. I'm afraid our colleagues are very fond of pranks. I mean, I'll say, like, what is this garbage? Prancer, Coltiac disease. These are puns ripped from the bedtime stories I read to my kids. I, I can't believe I got transferred from the CDC to this frickin' science circus. Oh, you must be the new CDC transfer. I was told I'd be working with you soon. I'm Dr. Stesland, your supervisor. Have you read the Hoferia page yet? Is... That just diphtheria, but for horses. Dwarfism, actually. I'm going on my lunch break. It was a pleasure to meet you, Carol. I saw her. I, I saw 
the thing. I have the thing that the specimen's called the Regent. I don't know how I know that it was her, but I do. It, it, she looked like all the other specimens, except she was a dark, unnatural purple with a large protrusion sticking from the forehead. And she was smiling. She, she had an awful rictus grin, like she just found something. I, I stood there frozen. I was able to scream, and then she started to push against the surface. I wouldn't know how to describe this. The mirror, the, the mirror, the mirror began to bend. It was like she was pushing through a nylon sock into the bathroom, into our world. It was only the sound of the movie next door that saved me. There was a gunshot or some loud noise that shocked me out of my stupor. I threw the garbage bin at the mirror so it shattered, shattered into a million pieces. It sparkles all over the floor.
got a steel pipe sitting in my lower intestines. I, I haven't taken it out yet. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty bad. I, I think it's starting to... I, I can taste metal. I, I started recording about uh, 15 minutes after the lockdown, following procedure, but I also have a fucking rod sticking out of my chest, but I'm doing the best I can. I'm uh, not sure. I think I've got 10 minutes. I, these lockdowns take about half an hour, usually, so I... I I, I'm, I'm sorry for all this. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done any of this. I, I should have fucking designed the first chance. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for Andrew. I'm sorry for Carrie. I'm sorry for that fucking Russian. I, I'm sorry. I'm so fucking... Oh, fuck. Listen, I, I'm sorry about all that. I did my best and people still died. I, it wasn't enough. Just tell... Just tell Norman I'm sorry. Tell him... Fuck it. Captain Pharaoh supporting in on August 6, 65. Now, I'd be lying to say that I know exactly what's going on, but I've had lobby duty for the last week. Now, usually it's just welcoming people in, get their names, occupations, yada yada, but these last few days it's been a tad different. You know, it's not just eggheads walking around talking about their therapy sessions anymore. They're getting serious. Real serious. Some of them stop showing up kind of serious. Now, I'm not the one to imply they're off at themselves or nothing like that, but still, I'm getting worried. I overheard a few of them talking and they said something about a WMT or something like. Now, if that's anything like a WMD and people just aren't showing up anymore, then I don't know what'll happen. I spoke with some of the guys, Wayne, Tex, Barney, those folk. I told them what I heard and what I thought, what, what might happen, and it sounds like they're about as spooked as I am. Things aren't slowing down any, and they really seem like they're starting to speed up, if anything. I heard from Hank during one of his breaks that he's pretty paranoid about all this stuff, almost as much as I am. know how long it's been since I saw him last. He told me something about countermeasures against the transformations. There was some kind of an accidental exposure, and I haven't heard from him since. I've looked through registration, you know, official secured business kind of stuff. His name's been taken off the list, and he hasn't been here for about a week. I don't know what's happening anymore. I'm asking my side manager what's going on about all this, and I'm going to Talk with Dr. Stenslin and... This is Dr. Carol Stetsland. The date is the 23rd of April, 1966, and the time is 18.06 as of recording. I am speaking to the former Robert Greeming, now classified as subject D03, due to a recent and still unknown series of events, D03 underwent a transformation from a human being into some species of equine. The exact specifics and properties of this new species is still being examined as of time of recording. Why do you keep calling me that, Carol? I attended your wedding and your baby shower. Please, my name is Robert. I was your co-worker. I'm a human being, not a fucking animal. Please, Carol. D03 shows signs of agitation. Sensors show a increased heart rate of 150 beats per minute. Such a heart rate would kill an adult human being, but a normal heart rate for an average black forest horse. Possible evidence to a Krakowski hypothesis. Why do you keep ignoring me? I'm right here. I'm a human being. I have rights. I was a decorated war hero. I fucking served in Scotland for fuck's sake. Please. What would little Charlie think if he saw what his ma was doing? Where's Sam? Subject D03. You said in a previous interview that you felt you were ready to be happy, so to speak, 
Could you elaborate on that last statement for the record, please? Fuck <laughs> you! Geo3, you are reminded that your current living standards are a privilege, not a necessity. Failure to comply with the interview will lead to consequences for you. Please answer the question. I'm not saying another fucking word until I get some answers. You treat me like a dog or a horse or a goddamn rat for all I care. You expect me to show you some hospitality? Where's Sam, damn it? Okay, fine. Let's go off script. Johnson's gonna skin me like a Russian dog, but we aren't getting anywhere. I don't care. Tell him anything you need to. Man is a war hero. Or a war horse, I suppose. Graeme, you mentioned something about Samuel and Charlie? Do, do you remember Utah, Carol? Do you remember when we accidentally burned down our tents because little Charlie tipped the grill? Your own flesh and blood, it's like you don't recognize his name! I don't have a child. Robert, I never had one. In fact, that's one of the reasons I wanted to speak to you. On the 27th of October, 1945, Lieutenant Robert Graeming was killed in the line of duty against invading German forces near Edinburgh. He led a five-man charge against SS units in Great Britain. He and Colonel Samuel Edwards and his entire squad perished in the fighting. What? What the fuck are you talking about? No, we, we held those bastards off. I held them off. I... <laughs> Interview terminated. Audio log special designation X-01. This is Dr. Norman Grayman reporting in on the final results of the Cetus Ferrarum experiment. A multitude of rapid breakthroughs have been made over the past month. First, using a mix of chemicals and processes I'm not allowed to document here, we've created an airborne, fast-acting variant of pathogen gamma, otherwise known as Prancer. Oh, I hate that name. I've had multiple test subjects relegated to producing more Prancer cells for synthesizing, which leaves one last crucial element of the experiment. Testing on a live subject. Subject D-03 has been selected for non-compliance. While we prepare the gas, we will record their final words. Good morning, Subject D-03. Today is the day. It's the final test before we send you on your merry way back home. I've had up your cures, Doctor. All I need to do is poison my blood, strangle my inside, and corrode my bones. Oh, don't be like that, D03. You should be happy that you'll finally get to leave after this. What the hell are you doing? Administering the cure, subject D03, and removing a blemish on our timeline. No, oh, don't look at me like that, you slack jaw mule. I've been recording your nighttime murmurs for weeks now, blabbering on about your wife and your kids and that phony freak show world you got spat out of. Here's the real kicker, D03. You, your wife, and your kids don't exist. Quit lying to me, you sick animal. You're the only one that could be in this cage. I made out of that form of a lie. <laughs> Three decades of public census records says otherwise, D03. We were confused by that casualty list with your name on it. How could you have died if you never even lived? That conundrum brings us to a single question. Who are you? We know those devil ponies waltz across dimensions just fine, but you're an oddity. You have memories of a false reality, and you share my name that sounds eerily similar to myself. Somehow, some way, through Satan magics, those ponies ripped you from one reality and brought you to ours. What does this mean for our world? I do not know. But I can be certain about one thing. You must be erased, Theo <laughs> You are a living contradiction, Robert Greymane. A violation of nature's laws. A boil to be lanced from the Earth's crust. It's interesting, Robert. We actually shared 
birthdays, childhood memories. He would have died in shock had I revealed we're one and the same. And that would have caused complications with the experiment. The same man with two different lives, two different names. Such emotional interference would taint my work. How unfortunate that you were a threat to humanity, Robert. I could have had you sent off to an asylum or far away from here, but instead you had to die. Subject DO3, after being exposed to the gas, lived for approximately two minutes before experiencing total organ failure. With this final trial, Cs Ferreira can be deemed a success.